Hi, I'm Kimball Bullington. This is Lean Six Sigma Yellow Belt Improved Phase. So we're getting to the end of the Demaic almost. And um, do want to point out that at the end of the Analyze Phase, which is the preceding phase, if you do not have enough data, you do not, not only do you not proceed to the um, improvement phase, but normally you would go back to the measurement phase and um, sort of go back through that, make sure that you've got it right. So how do we develop uh, potential solutions? How do we choose among uh, potential solutions? And here are a number of tools that we might use. Sticky storming that we've already talked about, an enhanced uh, version of brainstorming, really very different in a lot of ways. Um, cause and effect diagrams. Cause and effect diagrams we've talked about early on, I believe in the defined phase, and here we are using them again. A lot of um, uh, descriptions of DMAIC tools do not show the cause and effect diagram here, but it, I, I definitely believe it belongs. But also, I think, makes sense to use it differently than you do in the defined phase. In the defined phase, quite often, you'll use it as a um, problem-solving tool. It's not always done that way, but predominantly it is. But in this uh, phase, you're going to want to use it as a, um, um, a, a tool to create the desired uh, output. So we're going to uh, advocate two fish in, the, in our uh, yellow belt domain. So we have one fish, two fish, old fish, new fish. The first one is the old state, which had a problem. And the second is the new state that you're going to create. Um, one way that we make uh, decisions during the improved phase is uh, factor rating analysis, sometimes referred to as decision matrix or a pew matrix. Now, the decision matrix and a pew matrix are different from a factor rating analysis, but primarily in the way that they deal with the weights. Um, in a factor rating analysis, we always normalize the weights. We turn them to where the sum of the weights is equal to 1. And in the decision matrix, pew matrix, you do not. Maybe some other slight differences. You can look that up in Wikipedia. I'm not going to um, go through a decision matrix example, but I am going to briefly go through a factor rating analysis. So this is a, a decision matrix, or uh, sorry, a factor rating analysis of the decision on what route to use in my proposed across the United States uh, bicycle tour. And so the factors I have chosen are these. Are these the right factors? Are they the only factors? I can tell you that I'm not sure they are the only factors, or even the best. Um, and part of that came about when I looked at the, the numbers, um, the final scores. I wasn't sure that they really agreed with what uh, I believe in, so maybe I need to change these factors. But I, here they are. Friends, bike friendly. Friends means that I would have friends along the way, because uh, I sort of want to share the trip with them. Uh, bike friendly has to do with... Um, it's safer to travel on routes that bicyclists already travel on. And say safe, but safer. Um, cool factor. How in the world do you determine that? Um, uh, I have some thoughts. You know, I'd rather spend in, just visually, I'd rather be in a middle to northern route and through those mountains and scenery than the southern route. Uh, not disrespecting the southern route. It just doesn't appeal to me as much. And I'm the one deciding. Uh, difficulty, there's really three factors here, and I could quantify them. I didn't. I just uh, chose to subjectively analyze them. So it's distance, the number of miles on the trip, which range anywhere from about 3,200 miles to about 4,300 miles. So a thousand miles difference. Um, the, the longer routes are a third longer than the shorter routes. Um, elevation change. Um, and so um, that's. Um, some measure of difficulty. And then timing. So if only one of these is really a, a, a scheduled uh, uh, trip, which is this last one, it's with a group, and um, it crosses the United States in about 3,600 miles on the route. And it crosses the United States in 44 days. Uh, I think there's four rest days. So 40 days to go 3,600 miles, 90 miles a day, which I can understand people doing that, and there are a lot of people that do that. But I'm starting this at 65 years old at the earliest. 
So I don't want to do 90 miles a day. And I don't think I can do that uh, 40, 90 day, uh, 90 mile days. I just don't think I can do that um, in close um, proximity to each other, one after another. Uh, and, and so on. Uh, and across the uh, columns uh, here are um, the Transamerica Trail, uh, Western Express, Route 66, and on to Philadelphia, um, Southern uh, Tier, the uh, Lewis and Clark route, uh, the Underground Railroad, which is uh, south to north, very interesting, Mobile, Alabama to uh, like near Lake Huron in Ontario, I believe, uh, the Northern Tier, and then I believe this is called Travel Track. I put a dollar sign here because you have to pay for that one. And so you, you choose your weights, normalize them, and then you rate each one of the alternatives for each one of the factors on some scale. It could be a 0 to 100, um, well, a 1 to 100. And it could be 1 to 20, it could be 1 to 10, or 1 to 5. I chose a 1 to 10 uh, scale. And then you just um, uh, add up the, the uh, weighted scores. Um, it's probably already apparent that there are issues with this system. One is the choice of factors is arbitrary. We talked about that. Inclusion of unimportant factors may dilute the choice. Uh, necessary factors may be offset by unnecessary factors. So there might be some factors that if I don't have that, it just kills the whole thing. And yet, if somehow or another I don't account for that, there may be smaller factors that get really good scores and look the same or better than a, than a decision that satisfies the necessary factors. So you don't normally address that in factor rating analysis. Assignment of weights is arbitrary. You can come up with criteria, but even the coming up with criteria is usually arbitrary. And the valuation of alternatives is sub subjective. One of the ways you get past this, if you're in a, if a team environment, is to do it with a team, score individually, then come together and compare scores and discuss the differences. Uh, that's the way that I've uh, worked it in when we were using uh, factor rating analysis in industry. want to introduce this tool just briefly, the House of Quality. Uh, it's called the House of Quality because it looks like a house, you know, with a roof on top. Um, uh, also known as Quality Function Deployment, which I think is just a, a terrible name. I think that's a translation from the Japanese, and it just doesn't translate well, apparently, because uh, Quality Function Deployment doesn't really tell very many people what this is. Uh, but what you're doing is taking customer requirements and uh, translating them into um, actual product or service requirements. And you're using a, a, a scoring mechanism where you, where you get some segregation in the score. So instead of writing them like 1, 2, 3, I'm, we're writing them 1, 3, 9. So um, you, the strong ones uh, count more. Um, so this is a way to get the voice of the customer into the design process. And that's what we're doing is designing a solution uh, uh, to our uh, process improvement issues. Uh, on next will be failure modes um, uh, of, of potential solutions and how we address those. That will be in the next video.